Congress, one of the things we hear most is, what are you going to do about the spending and what is going to be done about the budget? And because of that, I thought in the few minutes I have, before you all move on with uh, your activities for, uh, for the evening, I'd like to just walk through the budget with you. And if you want an electronic version of this handout, it is on my website at blackburn.house.gov. Uh, but it kind of gives you an update on where we are and some of the things that we have to, have to do to get it under control. Uh, go to the sheet, uh, it's the second sheet in the handout, where we are now, and what we're spending and what we owe. Okay, the debt is, uh, and let me back up a minute, we're going to have three votes or three bites at the apple to get federal spending under control. One is the continuing resolution vote, which we did that a couple of weeks ago, and then last week we passed a short-term CR, continuing resolution. And that is the funding for this year. So that was vote number one. Vote number two will be the debt limit. Vote number three is going to be the budget. But this sheet talks a little bit about the debt. Now, at the top of the page, I have a quote from Admiral Mike Mullen. It's a quote he made on a statement he made on July 6, 2010. The greatest threat to our national security is our debt. And I think that's important. And for all of you who are young professionals, this is, I think, where you probably are zeroing in. If we want to cap and trade your future to other nations, keep spending. Because it will limit your ability to keep your income and use it to dream big dreams and achieve your goals. In a nutshell, here are the talking points on the debt. Our nation's GDP is $14.4 trillion. We are about to hit that with our debt. Our current debt, our current accrued national debt is the $14.1 trillion. And our debt limit, the amount of debt we can put on the books, is at 14.3. So that's like having a line of credit and you're about to max that line of credit out. That's why you're hearing so much about the debt limit, limit vote. Uh, what we are seeing in those numbers, inside those numbers, with our 14 trillion debt, our nation is spending 1.273 billion dollars every day on interest on the debt. That's how much goes out of the federal treasury, out of your pocket, out of your tax dollars, every day to pay for that debt. Um, the deficit is predicted this year's portion of the debt, the White House is saying one and a half trillion dollars. Other economists are saying they think the debt deficit for this year, what we add to the debt, is going to be closer to two trillion dollars. Now, if you are looking and comparing this to what we have here in the district, the numbers are pretty startling because if you have a child that is born this year, their share of this debt, where it stands today, is $45,000. So that's the load that they are going to have. You have each family responsible for so much of this debt, and it just grows and grows and grows. Uh, that is why we have to get the spending under control. Now, the stimulus unemployment was above 9% for 21 consecutive months. The average person is looking for a job 36.9 weeks. Uh, 40 and a half million Americans are on food stamps, the highest number in history. And since the stimulus that was supposed to keep unemployment 8% or below, since it uh, passed, we have lost 6.8 million jobs. So that is why we know what we've done has not worked, and we have to do some things differently. 
That's why I'm working on cutting the spending. We do not have a revenue problem, we have a spending problem. And it is time that we get the federal spending under control. In the box, I've got uh, some figures that just show you kind of how government spending growth versus the family budget and shows you, gives you an overview of some of those numbers. Look at the box at the very bottom, putting it in perspective. I mentioned the uh, $1.273 billion that we spend on interest payments every day. China holds 9.4% of our publicly traded debt. Now this, to me, is our danger zone. China owns 9.4% of our debt. We're spending $1.273 billion on interest payments every day. In other words, if you break those numbers down and get in, inside those numbers, we are sending to China right at $119 million every day, just in interest on the debt. That is why this debt limit vote is so incredibly important. The amount we are sending to China, you see that I've got the the Senate's in here, at that rate, China could afford to buy one new joint strike fighter every single day and still have $19 million left over for their treasury. This is something that has to be brought under, under control. It's a crisis that has been decades in the making. We are not going to get out of it overnight, but we have to get on the road to fiscal health. Go to the next page. The current year spending and the fiscal year 2011 continuing resolution. As I said, the spending this year, the continuing resolution is for spending this year. For the first time ever, Congress didn't pass a budget. We've been operating on a continuing resolution. That, the arguments that we're having, the cuts we've made, the $100 billion that we're trying to cut from what the President is proposing for the 2012 budget, we're cutting that out of the baseline in this current year's spending. You heard where we got the $61 billion in cuts, and I offered another amendment that would have cut another nickel out of a dollar in discretionary spending and would have pushed that up to $80 billion. That was over the current spending levels, but it would even give us greater savings when you look at the 2012 numbers. But I think we have to make these cuts in this continuing resolution so that we're helping to work those numbers back down and reset that baseline. Post-stimulus, post-bailout, post all of that federal spending, we have increased some line items 30%, others have increased as much as 80%. We need to return to the 2008 spending levels, which was the last budget we had prior to all of this accelerated spending. We need to do that because we know the accelerated spending hasn't worked. What we should be doing is sending a message to the American people and to the marketplace that the government is going to get its fiscal house in order. It's time for it to be done. Uh, I've listed some of the, the cuts here so that you can see some of the specific things that we have changed. Look at the third little block of numbers there. The CR cut spending, $10 million from the EPA for local climate change grants, $5 million from the EPA for cap and trade technical assistance. We cut $86 million from the Corporation for Public Broadcast, $8.8 million for exchanges with historic whaling partners. Uh, another $55 million from the United Nations Population Fund. All may be worthy programs, <coughs> nobody's saying that they aren't. It's just, it is time for everybody to begin to make, and it's time for government to make the, the spending reductions that everybody else has been making. I think the across the board proposals that we've brought forward are very fair because everybody needs to be in. Every agency, every bureaucrat, anybody that's overseeing any spending of taxpayer dollars need to make certain that they are doing their best to save those money. Okay, go to the next sheet. The next year, the 2012 budget, 
The President sent us a budget that has proposed $3.8 trillion in spending. It is 25.3% of the GDP, which is the highest level since World War II. It is $46 trillion in spending over the decade, including $8.7 trillion in new spending, new programs and new spending. Okay, the President's budget taxes too much. There are $1.6 trillion in new taxes included in that budget. $919 billion in new income taxes, $118 billion from a hike in the death tax, $455 billion from a transportation tax hike. And we know that this borrows too much. $1.6 trillion estimated deficit for 2012. This is after we've already had tr trillion dollar deficit estimates. It doubles and then triples the debt going to $46 trillion as we look at the next decade. $13 trillion added to the debt over the next decade. So what we have to do is come forward with how we are going to cut what we are spending, how we're going to look at meeting the needs and the priorities of this nation and bringing that budget under, under control. What I would love to do is to hear from you all, get your input and your thoughts on this. You're the ones that